let's begin the new chapter that is audit report in the previous two chapters what we have seen especially in the zero chapter we understood what are the basic terminology that we are going to use in fundamentals then we understood what is an audit what is the nature of auditing and what are the advantages of audit various inherent limitations you know various aspects of fundamental concepts scope of audit means what what it includes what it excludes all that we have seen in nature objective and scope of audit then we have seen what are the terms of engagement like in order to render an audit if somebody approached you to do audit like you were appointed as an auditor you need to give them the terms and conditions the terms and conditions will be given through engagement letter then we understood ethical requirements as an auditor you are giving an assurance to a third party which means the third party will have confidence on your report only when he believes that you are independent person so ethics and independence threats to independence all that we discussed and in uh, you know uh, in in the chapter 2 there is a third part quality control related standards which we kept pending okay now directly we are entering into the third chapter directly that is audit report and if you look at this chapter first of all we have seen in uh, first chapter nature objective and scope what is the object of auditor what we have learned the object of auditor is to obtain reasonable assurance why reasonable assurance because inherent limitations were there we cannot give absolute assurance yeah so the object of auditor is to obtain reasonable assurance whether the financial statements are prepared in all material respects that are free from material misstatements and report accordingly we need to give a report once we get that assurance ha huh, this balance sheet the pp and l the books of accounts everything are fine they are looking fine there seems fine they are true and fair uh, everything is genuine once you feel once you get that confidence once you get that reasonable conclusion assurance you tell others that everything is true and fair so nothing how do you inform people see ultimately you know very well your objective is to give opinion your objective as an auditor even in the definition of audit we have seen our objective is to express opinion on the financial statements yes or no so uh, opinion means what how do you express an opinion how do you give your opinion you will express through audit report you will express your opinion through audit report and now for that audit report there are some standards that are dealing with it i told you very clear the reason the, the background the reason why what is the need of standards in nature objective and scope chapter we understood what are various types of engagements what is the need of stand what are the need what is the need of engagement standards we have seen the standards are required to ensure uniformity getting the point today you see i'll show you tata motors their audit report i'm just opening tata motors auditors report you see tata motors auditors report So this is the auditor's report of Tata Motors. You see here. So first there is something called opinion. So entirely that is opinion. Then basis for opinion. Then they discussed something called key audit matter. Don't worry if if you don't have any idea on all this. Just listen what I'm saying. I know how to. Uh, I can take you slowly, structurally to a level where you can understand this entire report. by the time we complete this chapter you understand how to read the audit report of any company internationally not just indian companies getting it you understand in fact the audit subject learning process through this chapter fine so this is the auditors report now we have institute right icai icai institute of chartered accountants of india ah uh, this icai also has an auditor obviously icai is a body corporate so they were the icai has been incorporated under icai act correct la a minute so icai has been incorporated under ca act so as per the chartered accountants act the institute fis financial affairs has to be audited as per the ca act the stat audit getting it you see independent auditors report there is a opinion and there is a basis for opinion similar to tata motors audit report format right now look at state bank of india look at state bank of india this is state bank of india which is a banking company understand tata motors is a manufacturing company which is a company registered under company sir listed in stock exchange icai is a body corporate which is registered under ca act it's not a company icai is not a company state bank of india is a company first of all 
but in, in what the business of banking where rbi guidelines banking regulation act will apply for preparing their own financial statements tata motors prepare financials as per schedule 3 applicable financial reporting framework for tata motors is different applicable financial reporting framework for icai is different Whereas applicable financial reporting framework for State Bank of India is different. The financial reporting framework is different for these three different types of entities. One is, one is a company which is engaged in manufacturing activity listed on stock exchange which follows companies at schedule 3. One is a body corporate, statutory corporation. In fact, ICI is a statutory corporation. You can see ICI set up by an act of parliament. It's a statutory corporation. It's an accounting body. It's a record regulator for profession of accountancy tomorrow you and me we are we are all regulated by ICI and this is SBA and I will show you SBA annual rep auditors report I'll straight away go to auditors report so just a minute I think at the end of the financials, they might they might be having. Right? Yeah. So this is the this is the auditor's report for State Bank of India. You see here also there is an opinion and basis for opinion. You see the audit report given by auditors of institute of chartered accountants of india which is not a company which is a body corporate getting the point which is a statutory corporation the audit report format is same the auditors report on the tata motors company the audit format is same the sba auditors giving audit report the format is same and i opened you here tesla this is a this is a united states company tesla incorporation this is a company registered in united states getting it so this is this is the annual report of tesla Whereas this is annual report of State Bank of India, this is ICA annual report and this is Tata Motors annual report. Inside the annual report, one segment is financial statements and audit report. Annual report is a document which is given by these companies every year. This annual report contains lots of information. In that, some information will be dealing with financial statements of that entity and auditors report on that entity. Getting it? And uh, Tesla, you see, Tesla is also having, uh, you know, auditor's report. I will show you directly. So, we will go to Tesla auditor's report. This is the audit report of Tesla. Report of independent registered public accounting firm. You know, right in US, we call them as CPOs, not CS. Certified public accountant. Now, now those are CPS, no, they will incorporate a firm while rendering services. So, the, the, that firms are called as registered public accountant public accounting firms so their report opinion basis for opinion you see the report audit report format is same even for tesla company even for us company and i opened you here shell there is a company called shell company which is which is registered in united kingdom getting it uk uh, in this also they have financial statements i will show you the financial statements of shell company so yeah this is the auditor's report this is the independent auditor's report to members of Shell, okay, uh, public limited corporation, probably that PLC reports to public limited corporation. So opinion and here also basis for opinion, you see the format of audit report is uniform across the world. I can even show you multiple other companies and countries, Denmark framework, I have seen the Denmark, their audit report format is same. There is an act called Danish Financial Statements Act for companies that are registered in Denmark. Getting it, that act is applicable, the audit report format is same. You see, internationally, internationally, whatever the subject that we are learning, auditing, auditing standards or auditing subject, whatever we are learning in this class, internationally the subject is same, believe me. Just minor changes, very, very few changes, that's it. Getting it. Sometimes terminology might vary. What the, we might be using some term for a particular aspect. They might be using a different terminology for the same aspect. Getting the point. So the terminology internationally is same for audit. Not only for audit, even for financial statements also, even for accounting standards also. If you are learning accounting standards in India under ICAI, 
If you are learning auditing standards in India under ICI, believe me, you are already equivalent to, you are having knowledge of every accounting standard that is there in the world, every auditing standard. Just slight minor changes will be there. Hope you are getting what I am trying to tell. So we are going to learn the subject which is universal subject. So how to prepare this audit report? So our objective is to give opinion through an audit report. How to prepare that audit report? How to prepare that audit report? Easy question. And for that, we are learning through this chapter how to prepare audit report. Getting it? Now, now in this chapter, the entire content I classify into two categories. Category 1, in this chapter, whatever content, I classify it as reporting standards. One, one segment is reporting standard. Another category that we are going to discuss within this chapter, I call them as reporting requirements. Reporting standards, reporting requirements. The audit report format is discussed under the reporting standards. These are the standards on auditing that deal with audit report format. Inside that audit report, you have to give some additional reportings. Like there is something called CARO, there is a report called CARO 2020. I hope you might have heard about this CARO. It has 21 clauses. The auditor has to report on CARO, especially if you are a repeater. I don't know how many of you know this. CARO, they think it's a separate document. Many don't understand that CARO is part of audit report. Getting it? Anyhow, through this chapter, I am going to explain you what exactly is audit report, how all this is integrated into an audit report. I hope now you understood what we are going to discuss in this chapter. Now we have reporting standards. We are going to discuss 7 reporting standards in this chapter. 700, 701, 705, 706, 710, 299. 570 also. 570, if you look at the index of this book, we have kept it under completion and review chapter, which is the 4th chapter. Getting the point? So it's not there as part of 3rd chapter content, but it is there in the next chapter. Getting it? So anyhow, we will go to that chapter and read that. Getting it? Within this chapter itself, I will explain you 570 also. Hope you are getting it. That's it. Now, without any delay, let's start, let's enter into this audit report. So, uh, what is an audit report? So, how an audit report looks like? So, this is the audit report simple. What are the contents or what are the elements of audit report for audits conducted as per standards on auditing? So if you are doing audit as per standards on auditing, what should what is the format of audit report? So what contents will be there in the audit report? That's the question. Audit report will have these contents. It will have a title. It will have an address it to whom you are reporting this. It will have an opinion section. It will have a basis for opinion section. It will have these four items. You see these four items like material uncertainty, key audit matter, emphasis of matter para, other matter para, and I, I gave you here in a bracket call. They are applicable as per relevant standard. Like if you look at this audit report format is actually discussed in SA 700. This audit report main format is discussed in SA 700. You know, SA 700 has an heading, forming of an opinion, reporting on the financial statements. Forming of an opinion and reporting on the financial statements. This is the heading of the standard SA 700. As per that 700, the, rip, the format, how you should prepare audit report. If you look at that format, these items will not be there. Whatever I have striked right now, these will not be there in the original format of SA 700. As per SA 700, the format of audit report will have all these contents and all these contents. Whatever I have highlighted in between with the bold letters, getting it, these contents will apply as per relevant standard. Suppose, if at all, there is a necessity for me as per 570 standard to talk on going concern. In my audit report, if I have to explain about going concern as per 570 standard, then in my audit report format, this point will be added. Same way, under 701, if I have key audit matter to discuss in audit report, then my audit report format will have additionally this point. Generally, standard format of audit report, if you see, what is audit report format? These four elements will not be there. These four paragraphs, these four sections will not be there. You know, this is title and addressing. These are not called as sections, okay? 
whereas opinion is one section basis for opinion is another section you see tata motors opinion is one section basis for opinion is another section key audit matter is another section these are all various sections of the audit report section means what components parts nothing but getting the point so we call them as opinion section basis for opinion section material uncertainty related to going concern key audit matter emphasis other matter like all these these are all different different sections once all the sections of audit report is done then finally you have to sign the audit report you you have to you have to mention the place at which you signed the city name and the date you should mention and finally there is something called udin number that also you should mention this is 16th content nothing but okay so what are the, what are all this don't worry i'll come to it slowly so now straight away without any delay i will straight away discuss on title what is the title of the audit report what is the title of the audit report you know any letter you write or any report you write or just look at email id in google and all you, you, you might be you might have used gmail right in the mail id there is something called subject have you seen that mail subject subject that's a refer the what exactly the mail is dealing with what information is there inside this mail the subject will convey same way any letter that you are writing that letter should have some heading what is the letter dealing with same way you are giving some 10 pages report you are giving an audit report which is some which is 3 to 10 pages 3 pages to 10 pages generally it is more than 5 pages in any case you are giving some 7 to 8 to or maybe i can say 10 pages big audit report what is that content inside that you know that it's an audit report but other person look at we are giving audit report to whom shareholders our audit report is used by whom government tax authorities various other authorities will be using our report so uh, what is what is the report that you are giving you have to clearly mention the heading right so it's an audit report again audit report means whose audit report which auditor a company big big company like tata motors which is a listed company they have internal auditor they have statutory auditor they have secretarial auditor they have environment auditor they have operational auditor they have internal auditor they have energy auditor they have social development auditor they have uh, uh, you know uh, various other governance auditor there are so many auditors which tata motors has in audit department now which audit which audit report is this no this is independent auditors report this is independent auditors report you should clearly mention that this is independent auditors report independent auditors the title must be clear independent auditors report and you see here the tata motors the title very cleverly very clearly they said independent auditors report even if you see ici ici auditors they also have given clearly independent auditors report sbi auditors the, even the SBA auditors, when they gave audit report, they clearly kept the heading, independent auditors report. Even you see a company like Tesla, United, independent, report of independent public accounting firm, nothing but independent auditors report. Shall you see, they clearly mention independent auditors report. Now, what is the second? So, what is title? What title we must keep in the audit report? I hope you understood now. So title we understood what is what should be the title we understood so you see here the auditors report shall have a title that clearly indicates that it is the report of an independent auditor getting it independent auditors report this letter distinguishes the independent auditors report from other reports issued by other auditors getting the point so you should have a clear cut title so we have given what are all the contents of audit report we have given here right for all of them brief explanation is given below getting it so for title what is title below they have clearly explained getting it so that's title then the second one address any letter any mail that you are sending any message you are sending it is intended for somebody else right it is intended for some person right recipient for whom you are preparing this report you should put address for whom to whom you are giving this report you should address to somebody you see here tata motors to, to the members of Tata Motors, ICI, ICI, to the Council of Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. In ICI, 
council council means i think i already told you ica will have totally 40 council members like i told you in the previous session somewhere a company will have board of directors now institute who is manage who is managing this institute for institute of chartered accountants of india the managing people are called as council there are 40 council members 32 are elected members and eight members are of nominees of the government they are, they are nominees of the government total 40 so to the council the auditors are giving audit report on the financial statements of the icai getting the point so address is council in case of a partnership suppose <coughs> A partnership firm appointed me as an auditor to do audit of final accounts of the partnership firm to the partners. Sole proprietor appointed me to the sole proprietor. A company appointed me to the owners of the company. Who are owners of the company? Owners of the company are called as what? Members. That's why Tata Motors have used the word members. And you see State Bank of India. You see State Bank of India to President of India. To the President of India. You know, as per C and AG rules, as per C and AG, there is a concept called Comptroller and Auditor General, which we will be discussing in Government Audit Chapter. Getting it? We have a chapter called Different Types of Entities. Inside that one segment is Government Audit, where we will be discussing. Getting it? So, C and as per that, entire central government owned companies. You know, government companies are again two types. Is it central government owned company or state government owned company? If the, if the major ownership in, this, in that particular organization, in that company, major ownership is gov central government, then the president of India is the ultimate owner of the central government entities. Whereas if the entity is a state government owned, major ownership is more than 51% ownership is held by state government, then the governor of the state, then the governor of the state is deemed to be the owner ultimately for all the state government companies. That's why, remember, State Bank of India, State Bank of India, we all know, this is largest bank in India, having huge number of branches, huge number of ATMs, huge number of customers, all that, whatever it is, getting a largest bank. And this is a nationalized bank. Nationalized means what? Owned by government. Getting it? Which government? State government or central? Central government. That's why to whom we are reporting? To the president of India we are reporting. Alternatively, here alternative, you can also mention to members of State Bank of India Limited. Anything you can mention, not an issue. Getting it? But we are, we as a customary practice, we are following for all central government companies, we will report it as to the president of India. Able to understand. So title we understood address C we understood. So what is title? We understood. So address C also. Now you see Tesla. You see Tesla. What, what, what heading they kept here? To the board of directors and stockholders of Tesla. So to the directors and the members. Both they covered. But by the way, just, just a minute. Just because Tesla is talking board of directors and stockholder, this report is not useful for others. Huh? Others also can use just a live example. Right now I am using in the class you now to explain you. So, I am using this audit report as an academic purpose. Somebody else is using this audit report. A prospective investor might use this audit report. Bankers might use this audit report. Anybody can use. But primarily, we report this particular purpose to somebody. We dedicate this to somebody. That doesn't mean it is useful only to them. It is useful for everyone. Getting it? Shell. You see Shell, no? They cleverly merged title and address into one single, you know, item. So, uh, independent auditors report to the members of Shell. So, title and address it emerged. Anyway, they can follow. As long as there is a clear title, clear address, whether you report it separately or as a single item, that is your choice. But in India, as per standards and auditing, we, have, we are following a different approach. So, we will distinguish title from address. Getting it? In India, we distinguish title from address. That is in Indian framework context able to understand. Now, now, now look at, let's finish what is addressing. Address is what the auditor's report shall be addressed based on the circumstances of the engagement. Suppose if the circumstance of the engagement is audit of partnership firm to the partners, audit of sole proprietor to the proprietor, audit of corporate society to the society management. If law and regulation or terms of the engagement, they may specify to whom the report has to be addressed. 
generally in case of listed company audits like tata motors the the terms of engagement you know, the law company law itself clearly says the auditor has to give a report to the members of the entity 143 subsection 2 there is a section 143 subsection 2 which says tata motors has to give a report to the members of the entity getting it icic ICI, there is a law there is a law called ca act ca act there is a law inside that law probably some regulations might be there that regulations may be saying regarding the auditor has to report the audit report to the council so that's why they use the word council getting the point terms of engagement suppose a partnership firm appointed the auditor in the partnership appointment letter they clearly mention auditor after completing the audit has reported to the, has reported to partners in such case to the partners so as per terms of engagement as per law and regulation to whom you have to report to them you have to report now tell me i have a very very important tricky question law and regulation and there is something called terms of engagement which is superior between these two which is ultimatum which is having ultimate authority obviously law sir no doubt about it excellent now can can terms of engagement be can terms of engagement sorry can terms of engagement override the law and regulation no see in terms of engagement so when we are entering into agreement with auditor terms and conditions a company and the auditor they can discuss about some additional terms and conditions can the additional terms and conditions can the can these additional terms and condition can these additional terms can they be against the law can they be against the regulation can they be against the applicable financial reporting framework definitely not the terms of engagement can have additional terms it can have additional terms and conditions additional points they can talk in the agreement but it should not be against law as long as it is not going against law terms of engagement can be customized able to understand the terms and conditions can be customized depending upon the scenario requirement okay fine so the auditor's report is normally addressed to those for whom the report is prepared often either to the shareholders or to those charged with governance now there is a word called those charged with governance i told you already those charged with governance means generally top management of the company in case of company who are top management board of directors in case of partnership firm who are top management partners getting it of the entity whose financial statements are being audited in case of company the report is addressed to the shareholders to the members of the company you see tata motors to the members of the tata motors limited so that's title and addressee i hope now you understood are you clear now before i further before i proceed further you know um, let's go to sa705 one standard is there called sa705 you see here i felt very happy when the institute has given a clarification like this they gave this diagram which is excellent okay in sa705 they they have given a diagram i don't know how many of you know how many of you know that we we give to we give uh, two types of opinion actually our objective of audit is what to give opinion on the financials the opinion is broadly four types unqualified opinion qualified opinion adverse opinion disclaimer of opinion suppose if you are first time listener getting it don't worry you may not have idea of all this four but if at all you are repeater i think you you understand getting it now these opinions are broadly categorized into two categories unmodified opinion modified opinion what is it unmodified opinion modified opinion but you see here they introduced to one more level getting it unmodified report modified report unmodified report and modified report unmodified report means if the audit report is issued as it is as per 700 format i did audit of a company i everything is fine excellent no nothing i don't have anything to say whatever audit report format given no in sa 700 standard the format as it is i used without any modification then that's called unmodified report suppose in that format if i am changing something if i am adding some items extra then we call it as modified report because we are not following the original format we are modifying the original format and then giving report that's called modified report and remember 
modified report is different from modified opinion remember modified opinion is different modified report is different sir what is it exactly don't worry let me not discuss it right now i'm just briefing you here i will as i go further i will discuss in depth in order to understand this modified report versus modified opinion discussion we must finish majority of this reporting standards i told right reporting standards majority if we are able to finish then we can understand the difference between the terminology correctly right. next so let's try to enter into the opinion section the first and foremost section in the audit report that we are discussing is opinion so what is opinion section alternatively it's also called as auditor's opinion or simply opinion you see tata motors they simply wrote opinion i say you see the auditor simply wrote uh, simply he just mentioned opinion sbi you see the auditor simply mentioned opinion tesla you see the auditors have simply mentioned opinion on the financial statements shell you see they have simply mentioned opinion or alternatively you can also mention side heading with a clear cut explanation that it's auditor's opinion you can you can clearly mention that it's an auditor's opinion you getting it so let, let's discuss about auditor's opinion now tell me what is an auditor's opinion now here let me introduce uh, you know some examples auditor's opinion auditor's opinion this auditor's opinion no, is broadly classified into two categories the opinion is broadly classified into two categories one is unmodified opinion unmodified opinion and another one is modified opinion one is unmodified opinion another one is modified opinion so what is unmodified opinion and modified opinion again you know modified opinion is again classified into three parts getting it so qualified opinion qualified opinion adverse opinion adverse opinion disclaimer of opinion disclaimer of opinion so the modified opinion is again subcategorized into three categories unqualified sorry qualified opinion adverse opinion disclaimer unmodified opinion is also called as unqualified opinion unmodified opinion is also called as unqualified opinion fine now before i discuss this first let's understand look at this tata motors look at this tata motors i'll go to profit and loss account of the tata motors uh, so i'll go to profit and loss account of the tata motors so i hope you know p and l balance sheet format we follow vertical format right not horizontal okay so maybe while i'm taking examples i may use t, t, t shape balance sheet p and l for understanding but anyhow here you see now you see tata motors is having is having revenue from operations 65000 crore other operating revenue some 458 crore total income 65700 crore materials cost of goods consumed purchases and changes in inventory employees employee salaries and all 4000 crore ultimately what is the profit before tax for tata motors 1250 what is the total profit or loss for the year ultimately what is the profit or loss for the year ultimately 2720 crore 2720 crore that's the actual profit of the tata motors now now i will give you you know you 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 have to verify you have to do audit right you are appointed as an auditor for tata motors you have to check whether this amount 65000 crore is correct whether this 458 crore is correct, whether the cost of materials consumed, the number, whatever the number they have, it is, is it correct? Purchases value correct? Employee benefit, some 1000 crore. Finance, interest expenditure, foreign exchange loss, depreciation, product development, other expenses, various expenses they charge in the P&L, right? You need to verify all these expenses. You need to verify all these incomes. You need to verify all these items. Yes or no? You have to verify, right? All this. Now, ultimately, after verifying all this, what you have to do? You have to give opinion. Opinions is of two types. Positive opinion, negative opinion. Very simple. Suppose, you know, I verified all this. You know, uh, entire sales data I took, sales invoices I took, to whom they sold, customers' names, all that I verified. Goods sent or not. Yes, okay. GST bills, everything I verified. E-way bills, 
everything i have verified i concluded see i i know very well entire 65000 crore i cannot verify 100% how can i verify inherent limitation no but whatever invoice i asked the 65000 crore the 65000 crore is divided into 10000 invoices invoices i randomly asked management give me 900 invoice give me 949 invoice give me 1049 invoice give me 1023 invoice give me triple uh, this, this invoice getting it uh, four ones invoice give me 1243 invoice so i asked various invoices different different numbers i asked whatever number of invoice i asked that number they gave me and i verified that to whom it is sold when it is sold when it is delivered is it real sale or not i verified in depth each and every invoice whatever i asked they gave now tell me whatever i am asking you know not i am not verifying 100 percent for sure i am only verifying sample but you know which sample out of this 10,000 i am only verifying 50 bills 50 invoices i am verifying which 50 bills management don't know randomly i selected some 50 and they gave me entire information without any second thought without any delay without any doubt i verified 50 even if i go for another 100 they are ready to give immediately even if i go enter 10,000 also they are ready very much okay Ah, fine. So, by verifying this 50 itself, I got satisfaction that, ah, fine. Ultimately, some 50 items I verified and everything is correct. So, I, I assume, I got confidence that after verifying these 50 random bills, you got confidence that entire 10,000 bills whose value is 65,000 crore, you felt that it is genuine. Same way you verified this 458 crore sample, this 42,000 crore, some samples you verified, 6,500 okay, crores, this samples, 4,000 crore, 2,000 crore, 279, 1,766. In all these items, samples only you verified. By verifying random samples, you got confidence, you got satisfaction, you got sufficient and appropriate evidence, you got satisfaction that entire these amounts are genuine you are not getting any doubt because you view perfect samples so entire profit and loss account all the revenues all the expenses computation of profit computation of tax everything you felt they are correct because you got confidence and by the way tell me what is our objective should we get absolute assurance on this 42,226 crore no need if at all you get reasonable assurance that's enough you verified randomly some 50 bills, you know, in this also. Any 50 items you verified, any 100 items you verified, you got confidence that the entire amount will be correct. You got confidence that, uh, come and tell to the people that, based on your examination, you know, I'll come and give report in audit report. In the audit report, I'll come and give. Dear shareholders, based on our examination, to the best of our information and explanation given to us, the bal the profit and loss account whatever information is there it is right so you are giving positive opinion able to understand so you are giving positive so now tell me when auditor will give positive opinion when whatever information here they showed when i verify this information it is matching so there is an evidence for this entire information whatever numbers they kept here they are not some just like that they didn't add these numbers there is a clear cut background evidences based on examination of these evidences i got confidence that these numbers are correct so i am giving positive opinion uh, shareholders you asked me right you are uh, whether these numbers are correct they are correct i am giving positive opinion very simple so that's called positive opinion but remember the word positive and negative opinion is the terminology which I am using to make you understand the subject initially. Later I will convert them. Getting it? Fine. Suppose, let's look at. Suppose I, I verified this 42,000 crore. This is cost of goods sold. This 42,000 crore, no? Some 7,500 bills were there. Purchase bills. 7,500 bills were there. Out of them, I selected 100 bills. I selected randomly 100 bills. I started verifying 100 bills. I started verifying these 100 bills. And in this, some 20 bills, 20 bills whose value is, you know, 2000 crore. 
whose value 20 bills or total value 2000 crore they are all dummy bogus purchases i discovered this fraud let us assume let us assume 20 bills out of 100 which i selected i found that they are bogus what the, what is the value of that particular bill 2000 crore worth of bills bogus purchases they are not true but company showed entire 42000 crore as purchase profit is calculated accordingly whereas i know after i verify the background documents this 2000 crore worth of purchases is completely bogus it's fake now tell me can i give a positive opinion on this profit and loss account they are asking people are asking sir is the profit and loss account correct genuine reliable no i will say out of this 2000 crore mistake i found that to remember i only verified 100 bills inside that 20 bills itself 2000 crore really 42000 crore is 7500 bills were there out of them how much fraud would have been there how much bogus bill would have been there how do i know so it is not possible for me to verify in depth but i have a material proof i have a significant evidence i have a concrete evidence to say that this 42,000 crore is not a correct value. How much is the mistake? I don't know how much is the mistake. I found actually 2,000 crore worth of mistake. But inside this 42,000 crore, some little, I mean, even more mistake will be there, probability. So, no? so I will give negative opinion. Dear shareholders, this profit and loss account is not true, not fair, not reliable. Obviously, correct or not? So or no, understood. So opinions are two types, either positive opinion or negative opinion. Now let us go little in depth. Let's go little in depth. You know, same, this 42,000 crore is there, right? So fine, fine, fine. First, no, first what I told. So in the first example, I told you, I verified 100 sales invoices, entire items I verified. I did not find single mistake. Whatever I, I verified, whatever I am asking, they are giving me. Everything was absolutely fine. Now tell me, if everything, if everything in this profit and loss account, whatever the company, by the way, who prepared this profit and loss account? Board of directors. By taking help of some chartered accountants, by taking help of some, junior, some senior accounting people, they prepared this profit and loss account. You see, the board of directors are the one who signed this. Chairman of the company, CFO of the company, director of the company, secretary of the company. These are the people <coughs> on behalf of board of directors, these people are signing this indirectly on behalf of board. Means who prepared this profit and loss account? Board of directors prepared directors of this company but remember in this Tata Motors there are lakhs of shareholders who invested money so they prepared this profit and loss account and they they gave these numbers so I verified all these numbers and I got clarity that everything is fine now tell me when everything is correct when I have confidence that when I got reasonable assurance that everything is correct do I need to modify any of this information is there any requirement for us to modify this my question is, I verified everything. Everything is correct. My question is very simple. Now, since everything is correct, is there any need? Is there any need to modify these? Sir, no, sir, because everything is correct. No, why should we modify? Why should we correct it? Because already it is correct. As per your understanding, as per your explanation, as per the evidence we got, as per the reasonable assurance and confidence we got, since everything is correct, why does it require modification? No need to modify the, the profit and loss account, whatever board of directors prepared, as it is can be issued to the public, as it is can be issued to the shareholders. No need of modification. Okay, you also give opinion without any modification, you give unmodified opinion. I hope now you understood why we have used the word unmodified opinion. Unmodified opinion means I am giving opinion on the financial statements. I am giving opinion on the financial statements of the company where the financial statements of profit and loss account especially in our example doesn't require any modification it can be issued as it is if i say that the profit and loss account doesn't require modification what does it mean it is completely true and fair it is completely right it is completely correct that's what right understood or not 
getting it so when i am in that case i will give unmodified with which it's actually called as unqualified opinion which where, where we simply called as opinion where we simply call it as opinion opinion means unqualified opinion you see tata motors tata i mean you see icai the icai auditors no which opinion they gave sir they only said opinion sir they didn't tell which opinion it is like is it positive or negative or nothing they told sir if nothing is mentioned it's a positive opinion if nothing is mentioned if nothing is mentioned it's an unmodified opinion it's unqualified opinion able to understand unqualified means what qualified means something is wrong qualified in legal terminology in legal terminology the word qualified is used when to point out some mistake when something goes wrong we use the word qualified you you, you see medicine if 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 the report is positive it's a negative news for the patient correct la yes or no covid positive what does it mean you have covid infection is it positive news for you no but the word positive is used positive means presence presence of virus a same way in in audit in law and audit in legal and audit profession when we say qualified opinion qualified opinion means i am giving positive but subject to do something something is wrong unqualified without any condition without any doubt without any second thought i am saying everything is true and fair everything is correct that's why it's called unqualified opinion where i am indirectly telling the management where i am indirectly telling the shareholders dear all shareholders dear all users this profit and loss account without modification you can use as it is no need to modify anything in this pnl because everything is right that's called unmodified opinion stood or not now let's look at one more example suppose you know i am verifying all these items i'm verifying all these items so i'm verifying all these items turnover expenses all that you know somewhere in the purchases 42000 crore is there right in this 42000 crore uh some 100 bills i selected in one bill no in one bill no when i verify when i verify you no know, i found 1000 rupees mistake remaining uh, remaining 99 bills no mistake at all just in one bill 1000 rupees mistake is there i found 1000 rupees mistake it was it was wrongly accounted actual ex actual the original bill value is uh, uh, you know 1 crore 1 crore you know uh, 79 uh, 70 1 crore i can say 71000 it's actually 1 crore 71000 but company accounted it as 1 crore 70000 1 one crore 70 1000 rupees mistake is there now tell me in this bill 1000 rupees mistake is there right now first of all my question is do you bother about this 1000 rupees mistake in 1 crore bill value first of all okay fine maybe there you may feel a ah, 1000 rupees is big amount sir now i will ask you this question in the entire 42000 crore when you verify samples out of this 42200 crore will you bother about this 1000 rupees mistake obviously not can i say dear shareholders the comp the profit and loss you know everything else is fine according to everything else is fine oh, except this 1000 rupees everything else is fine getting it you want to give opinion to shareholders dear shareholders do not believe this profit and loss account 1000 rupees fraud is there can you obviously not sir 1000 rupees is a negligible amount sir in this company 1000 rupees is a negligible amount maybe 1000 rupees is a big amount for a small kirana store but for this organization 1000 rupees is nothing it's very common sometimes 1000 rupees 500 rupees 100 rupees mistakes are common like when i ask accountant the reason no sir why this 1000 rupees is mistaken sir we will record each and every expenditure nearest to 1000 rupees sir sorry nearest to 10000 rupees nearest to 10000 71000 nearest to 10000 is 70000 for 76000 nearest to 10000 is 80000 we will account nearest to 10000 rupees sir we don't bother about up to 10000 rupees definitely we don't bother at all management also not bothered shareholders also will not bother this is a kind of response again but now now but i don't want to agree with that i will give i will say don't believe this pnl can i no no how come you say that or can i say dear shareholders everything in this pnl is correct except that i found 1000 rupees 
can you can you even highlight this in fact shareholders will tell you hey do you have common sense such a big company thousands of crores transaction you are pointing at thousand rupees don't you have that sense materiality what is it materiality understand the concept of materiality thousand rupees may be big amount for a small small organization but for a company like tata motors thousand rupees not just that ten thousand rupees not just that even one crore up to one crore rupee also it is not material for them it is it is immaterial for them even if the even if you find one crore worth of mistake it's immaterial it's not relevant at all be able to understand so now tell me everything else is correct except this thousand rupees mistake which i found which company is saying they rounded off that's the reason it's not a mistake company is not agreeing that it's a mistake they are rounding it off to nearest nearest to 10000 so they are not agreeing that it's a mistake okay so can i report no obviously not so you have to give which opinion obviously positive sir this thousand ignore sir everything else as a whole significantly speaking is it true and fair yes it is true and fair ignore all that mistake sir you give unmodified opinion unqualified opinion you give unqualified opinion unmodified opinion fine very good next another example another example another example same profit and loss account okay sir revenue expenses all that in this 42000 crore in this 42 i i selected sample 100 bills i selected Hundred bills I selected. You know what is the total value of these sample of hundred bills I selected? <coughs> Five thousand crore. Which means out of forty-two thousand crore worth of purchases, I am verifying five thousand crore worth of cost of materials consumed by just selecting hundred bills. Out of this, one bill is there. In that, I found a mistake of ten crore. I found a mistake of. 10 crore worth of mistake and I felt 10 crore is definitely material I cannot don't say that 10 crore is also immaterial 10 crore is definitely material suppose this company turnover is due to 65,000 crore 65,000 crore or maybe let me say 100 crore let me say 100 crore 100 crore which is which is more than 0.1 percent of this company 65 65,000 into 0.1 example 65 crore so out of turnover what is 0.1% 65 crore what is what is 0.5% you know 0.65000 into 0.5% 325 crore getting it i found a mistake total valued 100 crore in one bill i found mistake 100 crore worth of mistake in one bill 100 crore literally mistake it's literally mistake so the cost of this is 42,126 only as per my analysis based on these 100 bills. Maybe if I verify entire 7,000 7, bills, I may find few more 100 crores fraud also. Or maybe few more 100 crore errors I may find. But based on 100 bills I verified, 100 crore worth of fraud, 100 crore, let us not discuss the word fraud, 100 crore worth of misstatement I found. Amount is misstated. And I feel... It is material. It is material, I feel. Now, can I say, dear shareholder? No, no, it's material. But rest all of the 99 bills were fine. In fact, since I found a mistake, no, I verified 50 more bills extra. 50 more bills extra, I verified. 150, I totally verified. Again, when I selected extra 50, nothing went wrong. Again, I verified another 50. Totally 200 bills, I verified. Still, I did not find single mistake, except in one bill. Aha, uh -huh, fine. Only in one bill, there is a mistake. This is something exceptionally happened. Okay, generally in this company mistakes and all will not happen. Exceptionally, very rare, sometimes mistake happen. Hundred crore worth of mistake happen. Now, can I say to the shareholders, sir? Uh, no, no. First of all, I, I found hundred crore mistake, right? I told them. I, I went to the director of the company. CFO is there, right? Tata Motors CFO, chief financial officer. I went. To, I went to him. I approached him, sir. Hundred crore worth of mistake is there in the this one, sir. So actual purchases value is 42,126 crore only. But you record it as 42,226 crore. Please rectify this 100 crore mistake. I asked him politely, sir, please rectify this. Please rectify this in the accounting. Please pass an adjustment entry. Prepare the revised trial balance. And accordingly prepare this pp and amount. And accordingly modify this profit figure. Accordingly modify reserves and surplus figure in the balance sheet. Everything. I told him very politely. Director rejected. Sorry sir, already P&L is prepared. Now we can't do anything. 
nothing i can i, I cannot modify sir it's finalized already it's finalized already we cannot again if i have to modify sir we, i have to call all the board of directors everybody and they need to sit and they need to take a decision all this nonsense i don't want to take sir uh, i can't modify he said sir this is 100 crore worth of mistake you have to modify the pnl account kindly modify rectify and give me correct pnl account i asked him he said he will not okay sir don't worry if you don't want to if you don't want to modify the profit and loss account which requires modification if as an auditor i'm telling him dear director if you do not want to modify this 100 crore mistake so that the pnl will look correct if you do not want to modify i will modify my report sir if you don't want to modify the pnl so that it is true and fair so that it is correct if you don't want to modify the pnl which requires modification if you don't want to modify i will modify so i will give modified opinion sir i will give modified opinion sir I told him, sir, in such a case, I will give modified opinion, sir. I will modify my opinion, sir. I cannot say everything is true and fair. Because I, I, I know clearly that there is a 100 crore mistake. And you are not agreeing. You are not correcting it. If you are not correcting it, I will have to talk about that in my report. I will have to modify my opinion. Then the director asked me, sir, okay, sir, you will modify it. How do you modify, sir? I told him, I will say entire PNL is wrong. Immediately, the director started arguing, sir, how come you say entire PNL is wrong? So only 100 crore mistake you found. How come you say entire PNL is wrong? Even if you say that, people will ask you the reason. Why? Why entire PNL is wrong? You, you will say that 100 crore is wrong. That's why you said entire PNL is wrong. People will screw you. People will not agree for your opinion. Uh -huh, okay, fine. So I cannot say entire PNL is wrong. Entire PNL is right. Entire profit and loss account balance sheet is right. Except that 100 crore. Correct? Le? In this example, except this 100 crore, Except this 100 crore, entire profit and loss account, every other value is correct, right? So what should I tell? Dear shareholders, based on my audit, based on my verification, the profit and loss account is true and fair. Except the purchases, 42,000 crore 226, right? It is not 42, 226, it is 42, 126. PNL expenditure is overstated by 100 crore. Profit is understated by 100 crore. Company position is understated by 100 crore because of expenditure overstated. Can I report like this? Okay, sir, you can report like this, not an issue. It doesn't matter. We can offer, if, so, if somebody asks us so why there is a mistake, I will give explanation to them. You, you, if you want, you modify like this, sir, no problem. But don't say that entire PNL is wrong. Where is entire PNL? Show me, show me what is wrong. Everything is right, sir. Just 100 crore. So here, auditor will give an opinion which is called as qualified opinion. What opinion here auditor is giving? Qualified opinion. Qualified opinion means what? You know, it's a positive opinion, but with exception. But with exception if auditor is giving a positive opinion with exceptions then it's a qualified opinion so here i am saying everything is true and fair everything is right everything is genuine the company tata motors financial statements balance sheet pnl everything is genuine except the cost of goods consumed is overstated by 100 crore accordingly profit of the company will reduce by 100 will reduce by, sorry will increase by will, sorry in this case understated le? ah overstated overstated actually it is 120 crore but 220 crore they debited so profit is understated by 100 crore position of the company understated by 100 crore except this rest of the pnl is true and fair rest of the pnl is genuine rest of the pnl is correct can i give like this opinion absolutely yes so if i am giving opinion like this where i am giving positive opinion with exception that opinion in audit subject we call it as qualified opinion we call it as what qualified opinion we call it as qualified opinion understood or not another another example I take. another example I take. suppose same same this 42000 crore purchases value it's actually cost of goods sold value i am calling it as purchases any anything understand the look at the essence of the example okay 42000 crore purchases i selected i selected i selected out of this some 100 bills as my sample 100 bills i want to verify randomly selected if i if 100 bills are correct i assume that everything is correct if something is wrong then i will think about it and take a decision accordingly that's what my objective okay now there is one bill whose value is 150 crore whose value is 150 crore in the 100 bills which i have selected one bill is there whose value is 150 crore 
and i asked this 150 crore purchases right from whom company purchased give me bill bill given by vendor company is not giving sir sorry sir bill is missing how come bill can be missing you have to maintain accounting records right you have to keep them for eight years as per company sir you have to retain it for eight years how come you say it is missing sorry sir it is missing is it really missing or this 150 crore is a bogus purchase i'm having it out but but when i when i when i see everything no when i when i when i try to figure out everything it's not a bogus i know it's not a bogus it's not a fraud but this 150 crore worth of expenditure actually come from what happened the company actually booked getting it so booked but purchase was not succeeded uh, some reason some reason this 150 crore worth of bill was debited in the profit and loss account. It is recognized as purchase. But when I am asking background document and all, they are not giving. Where is GST on this? Where is EV bill on this? Company is not giving any information. You know, I asked the accountant, where is this? Sir, can you ask the CFO? I went and asked the CFO. Sir, can you ask finance manager? I went and asked the finance manager. He is telling, sir, ask accountant. They are, they are continuously, you know, ask him, ask him, ask him like this. You know, they are just, they, they are making me revolve around them. I am just revolving around them, nothing else. Okay. So, I, I finally concluded that this 150 crore is, I don't know. I don't know whether it is really existing or not. They also don't know. Can I say it's bogus? In order to say that it is bogus, you must have a proof. Prove that it is bogus. I told, I went to the CFO and told him, sir, this 150 crore is a bogus bill, sir. Sir, how come you are saying it is a bogus? Nobody is giving explanation, sir. That's why it's a bogus. Sir, just because nobody is answering doesn't mean it's a bogus bill, sir. Okay. There is no, our company is so prestigious, so trustworthy. Our systems, our, com, our controls, our, our uh, information technology, nothing. Everything is so strict. Bogus bill, no chance, sir. Probably, background invoice might be missing. That is the reason why evidence is not there. How come you say it's a bogus? Show me proof that it's a bogus. Do you have a proof that it is bogus? I am quiet. I couldn't reply for his question. I am assuming that it is bogus. Assumption will not work here. You should prove that it is bogus. So, is it bogus bill? Don't. Know. But can you say it is right? 150 crore is. Can you say that 150 crore exists really? I am not believing. They are saying it is right. But as an auditor, I am not believing. Why, as an auditor, you are not believing? Because I need background proof. I need EV bill copy. I need transport copy. Entire that bunch is missing. Evidence is not there. To, to evaluate. Whether this 150 crore worth of bill is correct or not, evidence is not there. Okay, do one thing, sir. Evidence is not there. You are not convincing. Le? Do, Mr. Auditor, do one thing. You qualify, you, you give, you give qualify in the report. You, you mention that in the report, sir. We will take care with the shareholders. You mention that in the report. We will, we will explain to shareholders what happened here. Okay, so let's go for the other areas. Let's proceed further, sir. Don't stop here, audit. So this is how CFO replied. So CFO is telling me, please modify the report. Straight away. So I asked him CFO, Colin, sir, let's, let's not go up to that extent, sir, let's do one thing. This 150 crore bill is not there, no? Reduce it. Make it 42,000, 42,050 crore value, 150 crore, reduce it. Sorry, sir, we will not reduce. This, this amount we will not reduce, we will not touch it. But 150 crore invoice, proof is not there, no? That's what, sir, proof is not there. What can I do for you? Tell me. Sir, I will do one thing, sir, I will qualify in my report. I will say entire P&L is wrong. No, not, not correct. That is not acceptable because 150 crore worth of bill, 150 crore worth of purchases, proof is not there. I agree. But how come you say just because of 150, 150 crore, how come you say 42,000 crore is wrong? So give a qualified opinion, sir, if you want. Okay, I will give in this case also qualified opinion. I will give in this case also the P&L account is true and fair, except, except a purchase cost of 150 crore company is unable to produce in sufficient and appropriate audit evidence. Company is unable to give me background documents for 150 crore except that rest everything is true and fair. So am I saying this 150 crore wrong? No. Am I saying 150 crore right? No. What am I saying? Everything is true. For this 150 crore company is not giving me any proof. Indirectly what am I saying? That 150 crore don't ask me also. That's what I am saying as an auditor. So now you see, now you see, when you found in the second example, when you found 100 crore worth of mistake, which is material, you are giving qualified opinion. 
and here for 150 crore worth of material item it is not mistake you are not saying it's a mistake you you are saying you did not have evidence so if i do not have evidence for a material item or if i have evidence for a material item which is misstated which is misstated it is wrongly stated in this case it is wrongly stated 100 crore is misstated wrongly recorded whereas here 150 crore evidence is not there getting the point when evidence is not there and 100 crore worth of material mistake is there in both these cases we are giving qualified why why are we giving qualified even when evidence is not there or when there is a material misstatement i have a proof here i have a proof that it's a materially misstatement it's a misstatement which is important which is big getting the point whereas here 150 crore i don't know whether it's a mistake or not but evidence is not there both are material but i cannot but but they, these items cannot change the position of the company cannot change the performance of the company as a whole they cannot influence the balance sheet pnl as a whole yes or no okay. because of these two reason in these two examples in these two examples because of this 150 crore evidence is not existing or 100 crore where it is really misstated because of these items is entire pnl misleading no 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 it is not misleading entirely the pnl they are, they, are, they, are, they are mistakes and it's material. And 150 crore item is a material bill, but there is no evidence. So I just want to convey that to the shareholders. So give qualified opinion. Give which opinion? Qualified. That everything is fine except this 100 crore which is a mistake. Or in case of third example, except that 150 crore where there is no evidence. Just give that. You, they are not misleading the entire PNL, right? These items are not, not making the PNL to mislead everybody. So they are not pervasive. They are not pervasive. This 150 crore and 100 crore, they are material. They are material. But not, but not pervasive. What is pervasive? They don't significantly impact the entire result. If entire result is manipulated, entire PNL gets manipulated, as a whole it is misleading, then it is pervasive. We call it as, what is it? Pervasive. P-E-R. One second, I'll write P are pervasive. Pervasive means as a whole misleading. But tell me here 100 crore is there and 150 crore these two mistakes were there. These two material items were there. Are they misleading the entire profit and loss account? No, no. They are not. They are material but they are not misleading entirely. So they are not pervasive. Understood? So if, if you find a misstatement which is material but not pervasive, you give which opinion? Qualified opinion. Another circumstance, you found a material item where there is no evidence. You did not get evidence. You are not convinced with one material item. You, don't, you did not get evidence. You did not get information. Then also you give qualified opinion. So we give qualified opinion in two cases. One, I have information and it's a mistake. And it's material but not permits. Then I'll give qualified opinion. Second, there is a, there is a material item where I don't have evidence at all. But it is not permits. Then I will give again qualified opinion. Able to understand. All of you. Suppose now tell me. Now let's let's make it easy. Let's make it easier example. Okay. Uh, another example. Now same out of this 42,000 crore, I took 100 bills samples. And these 100 bills sample, what is the value? You know, 5,000 crore is the value. 5,000 crore is the value. 5,000 crore is a value. You know, in one bill, one bill, it's a one bill is there. One bill value itself is 1,000 crore. 1,000 crore. 1,000 crore is a bill value. And you know what? This 1,000 crore worth of bill value is as on 31st March. This is a bill dated 31st March. This is a purchase invoice. Invoice is dated on 31st March is the date of invoice. And you know what? When the company received these goods, you know, company received these goods in the April. Sorry, not even April, May month they received. So this is a balance sheet. This is a PNL account for 23. Means the year ended 31st March 2023. As on 31st March 2023, there is a one bill whose value is 1000 crore. Not even 1000. I can say, let us assume 2000 crore is the value of the bill. The purchase value 2000 crore worth of bill is there as on 31st March. Purchase, they recorded it as, they recorded it as 22, 23 financial year purchase. But you know when the company received the delivery, they received a delivery in May 2023. As per accounting standard, 
it is it is to be recorded as expenditure of 23 24 financial year based on periodicity concept based on periodicity concept and based on accounting standard you receive a delivery in 23 may right 2023 may comes in 23 24 financial year right then how come you record it as this year expenditure 2000 crore worth of expenditure you recorded it under 20 to 23 financial year rather it is actually 23 24 so 2000 crore worth of mistake you did clearly there is a clear cut evidence i went to the cfo and told sir this is a very severe mistake sir 2000 crore worth of expenditure you recorded it now sir it's actually next year expenditure sir so kindly rectify i asked him ceo cfo said sorry sir we can't rectify now tell me 2000 crore is it a big mistake yes is it is it misleading the entire pnl obviously you see the profit of this company is 1250 crore after recording this 2000 crore expenditure getting the point if at all 2000 crore expenditure is not there 3200 crore would have been the profit of the company so much entire profit of the company is misleading entire profit of the company the entire p and 2000 crore worth of mistake man it's not 100 crore or 150 crore it's 2000 crore entire p and l number entire p and l figure itself will change entire performance of the company itself will reflect in a different way it's a very big mistake now which opinion i should give cfo is not ready to rectify can i say p and l is true and fair everything is correct except to 2000 crore worth of mistake so fine i'll do one thing 2000 crore worth of mistake in this and in sales also 5000 crore worth of mistake is there 5000 crore worth of sale is next year whereas now it is recorded it is next year sale but it is recorded as current year sale 5000 crore if this 5000 crore sale is not there no in this year which is actually in the next year but it is recorded in current year the profit this is actually not not profit this is loss company is having 3000 crore loss but because that 5000 crore sale which happened in the next year company recorded in the current year it turned into profit so there is a mistake worth of 2000 crore in purchase 5000 crore in sale can i say if p and l is true and fair except to purchase is 2000 crore except sale 5000 crore except employee cost 1000 crore except depreciation 500 crore except all this everything else is good it is like the bike is in good condition except the tires have to be replaced except engine has to be replaced except seat has to be replaced except lights have to be replaced but bike is in good condition obviously not right when the financial when the, when the when the financial statements are containing mistakes in such a way that completely misleading the entire position and performance of the company it's pervasive you should not say like this everything is good except 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 how many exceptions you use one or two exceptions fine but how many so you cannot use too many exceptions that too the exceptions are very big they are outweighing the main opinion so what you do what you do you say that everything is wrong p and l accounting is not true and fair at all say that directly say that profit and loss account is not true and fair remaining might be true see except this 2000 remaining items may be true except this 5000 remaining 60000 crore might be true ignore that fact man predominantly it is wrong right is it right or wrong predominantly it's wrong that's it say that it is wrong adverse opinion what is it called as adverse opinion adverse opinion is given by the auditor when the auditor has identified material misstatement he has evidence that it's a mistake evidence is there you should have evidence to say that it is wrong to say that it is right you need evidence to say that it is wrong you need evidence either to tell it is right or wrong both you need evidence getting the point so you give adverse opinion you give adverse opinion getting the point you say that p and l is wrong how come you say director is asking sir how come you say wrong sir see 5000 crore mistake see this 2000 crore mistake i have evidence and it's material mistake not only material it's pervasive entire p and l is getting misleading the public so it's pervasive add to our opinion i mean add to our opinion I mean. understood or not next another example now i was appointed as an auditor of tata motors I went to do the audit of the company, so-called beautiful Tata Motors company. I, I wanted to start the audit. Okay. I wanted to start the audit. And uh, we entire our battalion, me, my senior articles, my junior articles, my manager, some 12 to 15 members, we all visited the Tata Motors head office. We were shocked. 
the director no is talking rubbish sir why are you doing audit no need to do audit without without verifying all this keep trust on us we are tata company please trust us okay or we are so and so company please trust us everything is true sir we directors verified at each and every amount you directly give us audit report they are asking sir no sir uh, it is not possible for me as an auditor i have to verify i have to verify background bills documents everything so many so i i have i, I need to sit and do 40 days i have planned for 40 50 days audit based on your company size based on the company all that i understood 40 to 50 days time 40 50 days we will spend time and do audit, do verify all the things and finally come and give you what opinion we will give director is rejecting sorry sir we will not give you access at all we will not give you access at all. No, sorry, you, you should not do audit. But you give me audit report. Only if you give me audit report, I will leave you. This is intimidating me. So what should I do? I did not verify anything. I don't know whether these numbers are true and fair. I don't know whether they are genuine or not. I don't know whether they are reliable or not. I don't, I don't have confidence on these numbers. I didn't get any reasonable assurance, right? I did not get any reasonable assurance on this. Getting it? I did not get evidence. See, when I am discussing qualified opinion, out of this, for, for 150 crore, there is no evidence. That is different scenario. But I have evidence for everything at that time. But in this case, predominantly, many items, I don't have evidence at all. I didn't verify them at all. And he is asking me to give opinion. Now tell me, sir, is it right or wrong? He is asking me opinion. Sir, I did not verify anything, sir. How come I say that it is right or how come I say it is wrong? Suppose there is a new mobile phone which got released in the market. You don't, you have never seen it. And I am asking you, what is your opinion on that mobile? Can you give opinion? Obviously not. Because you didn't verify that. You didn't see that. You didn't check it. You didn't operate that. You didn't test it. How can you give opinion on that? I will disclaim. I will disclaim the opinion. Disclaim the opinion. Disclaim means what? See, maybe, maybe I may say, this entire, you, you have verified sales. You have verified, let us assume other income. You have verified all this. But this purchases you didn't verify. You did not verify purchases. 42,000 crore worth of purchases you didn't verify at all. Company is not giving you data. They are not giving you data on this. So this 42,000 crore worth of purchase value you are not having any idea at all. You don't have any confidence at all. Now when 42,000 crore worth of item you didn't verify, can you say this 1200 crore is right? This 1200 crore is a result derived based on these expenses including this 42,000 crore. But you didn't verify this. How come you give opinion on this 1500, 1200 crore? You can't. So, when a material item, pervasive item, very significant item, you didn't verify, you don't know anything at all about that. You are unable to give opinion. You are unable to, you cannot give opinion. Then, you disclaim the opinion. Disclaim means what? I don't give opinion. That's called disclaimer of opinion. When auditor will give disclaimer of opinion, when the auditor is unable to verify, unable to do audit of predominant items of the predominant components of the financial statements, he will give disclaimer of opinion. They give his opinion, disclaimer. One, I verified everything and everything seems correct. I, I, got, I got confidence that yes, sales is correct, purchases is correct. Employee expenses, depreciation, everything is correct. I have seen evidences everywhere. I will give unqualified I found some mistake. It's material. But entire PNL balance sheet is not misleading. But it's material. It's a big mistake. But entire it is not misleading. I will give qualified opinion. 150 crore worth of bill, not getting any proof. But remaining all other items have verified, proofs were there, everything is good. But this 150, I'm not getting proof. So, I am not confident enough to say everything is right. So, say that everything is right, exception, with exception about 150. Ah, fine, then qualified opinion. I verified everything. 2000 crore worth of mistakes were. Sales value 5000 crore worth of mistake is there. Entirely, if you see, these mistakes will change the complete position of the company, performance of the company. I will say everything is wrong. I will say that the entire P&L is not right, not proven fair. The profit and loss account is not proven fair, simple. Because 5,000 crore mistake in sales, 2,000 crore mistake in so and so. So, uh, it's a significant, entirely misleading. So, I will say straight away, uh, it is not proven fair. 40,000 crore worth of evidence, I did not, 40,000 crore worth of expenditure, I could not verify at all. Remaining all items I have gone through. How come I say profit is right or not when I, when I have not verified, when I have not verified major, predominant item in the expenditure. Don't give opinion. 
you are unable to comment right it is right or wrong you don't know can i say it is wrong just because i did not see the evidence can i say it is so suppose you no know, i asked you about a phone in the market which a new phone which is released in the market i asked you what is your opinion you have never seen that phone can you say ah, that's the worst phone you cannot say right you cannot give any opinion without testing it so i did not tested it man whether it is right or wrong i am not in a position to give opinion so i will not give opinion that's called disclaimer of opinion what is it called as disclaimer of opinion so in this session we understood how to frame opinions how to conclude conclude about the opinions we understood anyway in the next session we we have many definitions we have definitions for all of them we will be discussing those definitions we have a table tabular format so that we will be discussing and then we'll be proceeding further i hope until now you have thoroughly enjoyed and you know what we have understood right now opinion section we have understood partially opinion section is almost completed just that we should see the definitions we should see the wordings how the wordings will be if that is completed this particular opinion section will be completed then we will have to discuss about basis for opinion and all so one by one we will be discussing all this so once we discuss all this this chapter is over as simple as such clear that's it so have a nice time so in the next session we'll meet